A lot of my imagery is very abstract and energetic. Sometimes, when I'm intrigued by a literal idea, I put it into my work in a recognizable form. For instance, I read about knockout mice in the New York Times. I was fascinated. Basically, the scientists reported that if a certain gene is knocked out of the DNA of mice, the males become violent. Not the female mice, just the males. So I'm putting subliminal references to knockout mice in the prints I'm going to do in New York. Throughout my life as an artist, I've worked in many media, and usually all of them at the same time. I am, of course, a painter, and I design tapestries, I make collages, I work with many kinds of materials and, and prints. And the reason I do that is that any idea will have many possibilities to it, some of which are expressed best in paint and some best on a sheet of paper or maybe in some very large work. It's all mine, so I use it. What is really endlessly amusing to me is how different an image can be with only the slightest change in it and how it, uh, something will look um, quite, quite uh, strange or other than you expected. Here, here are two images which look so different and they actually come off the identical drawings. Uh, uh, the name of it is Escape. Here it is in the full spectrum of colors and here are the same plates in black, white, and gray. In here, this little bit of energy escapes from the um, picture plane. Here, the same thing is happening, but it's, they're, they're like night and day. As an example of how ideas come to me, one day I was riding through the Third Street Tunnel in Los Angeles. And I noticed it looked almost as though the tunnel were breaking up on both sides. The dividing line down the center sort of rose up and broke into pieces. And then as the car sped by, I realized that often the distance, everything was in focus, but everything was moving in periphery. made the experience of the tunnel very dynamic. And I could see that the normal shape of the tunnel was breaking down and becoming something quite else. It was becoming the illusion of movement. I thought it would be very interesting to be able to catch that kind of thing in a, in a work of art. First, I tried to figure it out much the way you might figure out an equation, by making little drawings that were very small, and then little larger ones or little more complex ones. And uh, then I began making actual works of art until I finally got to a very simple statement of that illusion in the painting that I called the tunnel. After the tunnel images, I became more and more involved in movement, thinking of molecules that uh, shimmer as they move. My paintings take this illusion even farther. They seem to move as the light changes from day to night. And all this interest in particles and modules coincided really with the times in which we live. There's the explosion of technology. There's the atom bomb and the degradation of the environment and space travel. It's been a dramatic part of my life. I 
I became interested in the theme of space very early. I was able to get a tape of the sound of space as it was recorded by Voyager 2. When I listened to this tape, it made even more real for me what I have imagined it to be like in outer space. It's probably impossible for me to do what I'm trying to do, which is to make real to myself the vastness of outer space. It's something I will never see personally, that I will never hear personally. I would have loved to be able to go up in one of the shuttles. The Jet Propulsion Lab is right nearby here in Pasadena. I can go there anytime I want to. And they're very open to the public. I've watched the flybys of planets when the pixels come in and the photos of space and places that no one's ever seen before. Stellar winds, solar flares. Uh, there are all kinds of possibilities that enter my art. have five or six works in progress at the same time. When I stop something, it's because I haven't decided where to take it. I love the night. In the night, uh, everything can be as relevant as you want it to be or as distant. It's quiet. There aren't a lot of sights, you know, flashing by you, horns aren't going, the telephone isn't ringing, and you can give a lot of concentration on what you want. You can be as free or as foolish as you wish to be. So I find that I can both concentrate and also be risky because I'm alone. I'm in New York for a month of hard work with Judith. I prepared as much as I could, but now my intuition has to take over. There's always a surprise. Uh, she may walk down the street in New York and see something that catches her eye. And um, unbeknownst to me, even though everything technically is going well in the shop, this new bit of information may change the work. Actually, I want to link two ideas, one that's new and uh, the other one I used in a painting maybe 50 years ago. This was presented as the two halves of the atomic bomb uh -huh. in, in Life magazine at that time. And I used that image in a painting of 1951, I think, in a quite different context. Mm -hmm. 
The serrated edges of the two halves fit together, uh -huh. but make a larger contact area so that a nuclear reaction could take place between them. What made you think to bring that image back here so many years later? In a way, I was always hooked on the paradox of that image, what we are capable of, mm. both for good and for evil. And of course, that image represents evil to me. I'm interested in the nature of nature and the degree to which it obliges us as human beings to do what we do. Otherwise, I can't possibly explain what goes on in the world. Inside up and right side down, right? Yes. Yep. It's nice, it's transparent through here. Yes. Isn't that lovely? Yes. yes. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes. Uh, I want to look at it on the wall so that I can make sure the place. I'll take it over there. All right. I want to make sure. That... Yeah. Can you move that about half an inch to the left? Those two images, the, the half, they look like helmets almost, mm -hmm. uh, look heavy. And there they are, floating. Yeah. And you keep expecting them to fall, right? Uh -huh. So the thing is full of tension. And the image that it's floating on represents natural energy I see. before we got our hooks into it. I see. But what I tried to do in drawing the image was to allow it to be a very free kind of energy. And contrasting with what we made of that energy. It's very strange. Very mysterious. Yeah. When I finish a painting, it feels very good because I controlled it all myself. When I finish a print, which is collaborative and has a lot of dangerous moments, then I feel like I just finished the marathon. I'm tired and I feel lucky. Well, congratulations. But naturally. <laughs> Congratulations, you're welcome. <laughs> That's good. Okay, call it a day. <laughs>